Hello, I'm at TCT 360 show and it's called that because we only get to rest for five days a year. TCT stands for Time Compression Technology, which is basically rapid prototyping. I'm on the E3D booth this year and thanks to Lulzbot and E3D for bringing me here. I brought my Lulzbot Taz Pro to the show and this printer of course uses the E3D Titan Aero Extruder system. This printer is dual extruder and it has two tall heads on a mechanism that raises and lowers them so you can make really clean dual extruder parts with no purge and no ooze. I'm making a dual extruder version of my open dog dog bones and I've got open dog with me so there's a demo later in the video. Also on the booth we've got Matt Denton and his giant Lego. So this is your giant Lego go-kart. It's my giant Lego inspired XXL go-kart. Uh, yeah, this is Mark II. Um, what makes it Mark II is that it is slightly longer. So Ivan Miranda very uh, kindly printed me some longer pieces in one piece on his giant printer uh, to make it longer so that I had more leg room. Um, but actually I found I had too much leg room and I shuffled it all forwards a little bit. All right, and these, so it's 8.3 scale, is that right? It's 8.34. It would be 8.33 recurring, but I rounded it up to 8.34. And that's all because of the bearing size I used. So I used a 40 mil bearing, and that was the size that it worked out to be by scaling the Lego up and getting the bearing through one of these holes correctly. All right, so we've got um, basically two brushes motors, and it's got a differential, and it's got traction control. It has, yeah. So there's a, there's a differential hidden underneath of here, and the motors. And I had this special, it's not really a differential, what it is is a split axle. So it's a twin axle coming in and a bearing block in the middle and then a motor on each side. So it's acting like a differential. And then the software in the VESC has traction control which monitors the speed of each wheel. And if one wheel is spinning up too fast, it slows it down so the other wheel can catch up. So it's acting like a, an electronic differential. All right, so the steering all looks like it's totally 3D printed out of plastic and then but you've got sort of pedals and then you've got actual disc brakes so the steering is a parallel linkage so it's horrible but it does work now i've got the differential in place because before i had this differential it wouldn't go around a corner unless you skid steered it um, so the steering's working really nicely although it is like i say a parallel link which is not too good the turning circle is horrible because now it's really long uh, yeah, it was all 3D printed. There are some nuts and bolts in there just holding some of the uh, uh, structure together. And yes, I did add proper disc brakes because the electronic braking was nowhere near enough to slow it down. It weighs nearly 45 kilos now, plus the driver. So, you know, disc brakes essential. Matt also had his giant Lego bulldozer, which was originally Lego set 951, released in 1979. The whole thing's printed five times scale though, and he's also made it radio control, and it's also got engine sounds in it. So a pretty fully featured giant Lego set, and that was pretty popular at the show. And after a couple of powering up issues, it was time for an open dog demo. It's pretty good actually having a space big enough to drive it around in because I've only ever operated it in my house before. So having this large area with really thin carpet on actually helped quite a lot and it walked around just fine. As I mentioned in the build series, it's actually quite wobbly and that's due to the 5 to 1 reductions on all of the motors, so it barely holds itself up, 
although that helps quite a lot because it's also very compliant with the ground which is what actually makes it stable. However, as you'll have seen, I'm working on OpenDog version 3 with 10 to 1 cycloidal gearboxes on all of the 12 axes, so that should make quite a big difference in terms of being able to turn up the rigidity on the joints, so hopefully it'll walk a bit more like a robot and less like a drunk animal of some sort. Open dogs seem to be pretty popular though, and I heard people saying the words Boston Dynamics several times in the background, so hopefully that means they thought it was good. TCT Show was attached to the Interplast Show this year, which is where you can go and meet people who've been involved in the injection moulding industry for 50 years, and there were quite a few exhibitors with big machines and lots of other mechanical components. It's a great engineering day out and it's the sort of place you'd go if you were setting up an automated factory and you needed some really heavy duty rigid motion control systems. So there are all sorts of demos like this with really expensive robots. There are also exhibitors with some extremely specialised and high tolerance components including these giant screws. I'm with Rory from E3D and the announcement for this show is the new Rapid Change Revo. So can you tell us a bit about that please? Yeah, so Revo's our new system for cold one-handed nozzle swaps. So we're doing away with hot tightening um, and all the possibility of getting leaks, getting out spanners, PPE, all, all that stuff. That's the main thing we're doing with Revo. Okay, and so the nozzle is super long and that's both the nozzle and the heat brake, right? But yeah, it's effectively um, an assembly which is the nozzle and heat brake all in one uh, and that just screws in to either Homera uh, or a, a variant of Homera, a new really small one that we've made, Revo Micro, and then a backwards compatible one, um, Revo 6, which is anywhere a V6 would go, you could put that in its place, just drops right in. Launch is going to be around December, so just in time for Christmas. Um, to start off with, it's just going to be brass, 0 0.25, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and 0.8 um, with abrasive to follow shortly afterwards. I'm here with Greg from E3D who invented the tool changer, recently featured on Linus Tech Tips, a million views, so you should check that video out. So Greg, what's the latest development in tool changer? The Duet uh, tool board has an accelerometer built into it where we can measure acceleration which helps compensate for any ringing that occurs through movement or off balance in the system. So you can get very nice uh, smooth edges, uh, it helps reduce it quite a lot. And I've noticed this little servo in the side here that wipes a little poo off. Can you tell me a bit more about that? That's the, the pebble wiper, not something I can claim to have invented, uh, but we've put it on the machine because we used to have a massive build-up of stringy bits at the bottom, but now we end up with tiny little bits on there which are much easier to handle and remove. Uh, also saves material too, of course. So the last time that we looked at this, or at least I was here, is 2018. So I believe there was a servo that actually did the tool change. And now this looks like a, a kind of bigger, more substantial, well-developed unit. Yes, we have a, a, a small micro-stepper inside which manages all of the tool changing and tool pickup. Um, it's rated to uh, around a million to a million and a half tool changes before it fails, which you think is quite a lot. But if you think about it, each print is uh, averaging four to 6,000 tool changes if you're using all four tools at once which uh, you need to make sure it works, so we need to have a good quality motor in there. All right, so of course we've got four 3D printer tool heads on here, but we don't need to have, it could be other things, so subtractive, and I notice there's a big collection in the cabinet, so what um, other innovations have you seen? Uh, we've seen people putting pick and place systems up there, picking up like ICs or nuts and bolts or inserts, threaded inserts for mating into the plastics. Uh, we've also uh, seen people with microscopes looking at it and examining uh, how quality of the prints are. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of people doing different stuff. Obviously, there's a lot that we can't tell you about that people do with it. Yeah, it's good. It's uh, exciting to see it being used so uh, differently everywhere. This is one of the first shows I've been to since COVID lockdown restrictions were eased a little bit. So it wasn't a giant show, but we still had some of the big names in 3D printing like 3D Systems and Stratasys. There were of course lots of other interesting looking things at the show, but those are the subject of a video that I'm not making. I'm here with Sam Prentice, who's a member of Droid Builders UK and also has a YouTube channel, The Real Sam Prentice. 
So you've made this droid. What's the, I've seen a smaller version of this. So what's the origin of this actual droid? So the origin of the droid originally was that it was um, concept art for the Rise of Skywalker. And I've been working with Michael Badley on this particular design and also Polymaker. And uh, we've used slice engineering uh, hot ends to basically make this. Okay, and it's all printed in Polymaker filaments. So is it um, PLA or you've got some TPU on the tracks? Yeah, sure. So uh, we've got PLA and PETG, which is basically the parts of the frame. Then we've got TPU on the tracks and also the back wheel. And we've also used polycarbonate on the gearbox. So what we've got is a 12 volt, very, very simple 12 volt motor. Uh, and it goes into a planetary gearbox, which we printed in PC. And um, yeah, it works really well. All right, and are there still bearings that like metal in here, or is it all...? Yeah, I think around about, I think it works out to be about 95% 3D printed. So the rest of the parts are, you know, we got a, um, we wanted to go either with a saber tooth. In the end, we went with a siren uh, controller that we found that also did RC stuff. So uh, it works really, really well, yeah. Right, cool. So um, is there going to be, so this is published presumably somehow so other people can build it. Is there any sort of development, any more versions? Is there going to be any more finishing as well? Because I, I get it's a 3D printed concept or 3D printed showcase. So what's the sort of future for this droid? Sure thing, yeah. So uh, in order to download the files for this, it's going to be on the Michael Badley Patreon page. And, um, you know, I think it's like three quid or something like that. You know, you get, get to be part of that whole um, regime of building all these different types of droids. But, yeah, I want to put a Raspberry Pi screen in the front here, maybe have some sort of proper animation with the eyes and things. Um, robot it up a little bit is probably the next thing. And again, this, this whole stuff comes off. Um, I've actually been keeping tools and nuts and stuff inside of this. So, uh, you know, it's, maybe there'll be something that pops out of here. I don't know yet. But um, if people want to build it, it's, um, yeah, it's available. So. All right, thank you. So check out Sam's YouTube channel. Open Dog is tired, and that means it's the end of TCT Show 2021. So let's look forward to next year. That's all for now.